I've picked this painting because, partially because it's a very small painting and in a museum full of rather large work, it's very nice to come down to something rather intense and small. But it's a very enigmatic painting, I think, most of all. The sort of enigma is absolutely at the heart of what this painting's about. Uh, it draws you in to think about it, not just look at it. First of all, the scale of the work. What scale is the figure? There's an awful lot in the work to do with the perspective, the horizon line, the fact that you're looking up at the figure, to tell you that looking at something monumental, whereas it's obviously a human figure, so is it human scale or is it this giant figure? Um, it puts you into this strange position of what scale are then you in? Are you tiny or are you very large? Are, are you sort of uh, normal size? So it's a very interesting painting to look at in terms of how it makes you feel as an individual looking at the painting. And then another great enigma of the work is who is depicted? Who is the person with the eyes closed? I think there's a certain religious idea of the work, and certainly in Odilon Redon's work, you'll find a lot of religious subject matter. Is, if this painting is religious, who is depicted? Is it um, Mary? Um, or is it, in fact, Jesus? Because one of the interesting things is you don't know the sex of the person. Certain elements of it look very feminine, whereas other aspects, the neck, for instance, looks quite masculine. This painting could be said to represent both Mary and Jesus in one subject, which I think is an incredibly interesting way of depicting the religious subject matter. What I'd also like to say about the work is the way in which it's painted. Um, Redon has scraped, put the paint on and then scraped it back in various places to reveal the underground, which is a very impressionistic way of painting and one which an artist like uh, Fantin Latour used particularly well. Um, scraping the background to create this um, iridescent effect almost, where the underlying weave of the canvas describes this pearlescent uh, background as if the light is shimmering and it gives the painting a sense of movement and that sense of movement and uh, shimmering light effects I think is very beautiful in the work. Um, and you even see that in the face. The face has this sort of glowing under effervescence about it, which is very charming. This is a painting, again, which uh, one of the enigmas is this, this shoulder here has been altered. And Redon's work is very interesting and in it has very open aspects where you see the underdrawings sometimes, but very often the works can appear very finished and very flowing. So this, within the, the whole work as a whole, is rather bizarre that he chose to left, leave this, uh, the, these lines here as if he couldn't quite decide where the shoulder was supposed to be. He's done it quite deliberately in order to, again, create this strange effect of, is this a shoulder or is it a rock? Again, once again, it changes the scale of the work, just this small line, because it creates a sense of movement, sort of as if the shoulder is actually moving up and down, but it also isolates this little area here slightly in order to make it look like a rock. You could always imagine a small figure standing on this, looking down into the water in front of it. If, in fact, it is water, again, you don't know what this surface is here. Um, you don't know whether they're just appearing out of the earth or, it's, or it, they're, they're submerged in water. Painting's full of indecisions, but very controlled indecision from Odla Redon's part. And the indecision is purely on the side of the viewer, I think. This is a painting which I've... It's influenced my work quite a lot. And I've made work which is directly based on various aspects of it. The idea of the figure not having any particular size and changing the perspective I've used in my work. The idea that the figure is androgynous as well and you specifically don't know what sex it is, again, is something that I've used specifically in my work and influenced by this painting. And the idea of the religious subject matter, again, is something which I've tried to use in my work. After being here um, and looking at this work again, I'm going back to the studio and I'm going to make a painting which, again, slightly more specifically based on this painting, because I think it's a, a artwork where I'll continually go back to throughout my life, um, because it has so much that I want to steal from it, fundamentally. La nature est un temple où de vivants piliers laissent parfois sortir de confuses paroles. L'homme y passe à travers des forêts de symboles qui l'observent avec des regards familiers comme de longs échos qui de loin se confondent dans une ténébreuse et profonde unité.
vaste comme la nuit et comme la clarté. Les parfums, les couleurs et les sons se répondent. Il est des parfums frais comme des chairs d'enfants doux, comme les hauts bois verts, comme les prairies et d'autres, corrompus, riches et triomphants, ayant l'expansion des choses infinies, comme l'ambre, le muscle, le banjoin et l'encens qui chantent les transports de l'esprit et des sens. »